Welcome to this new module, Infection Control. It will cover infection control, including aseptic and non-aseptic techniques. After completing this module, you should be able to describe the four basic infection agents along with their unique characteristics, discuss factors involved in the spread of disease and the chain of infection, describe the various sources of nosocomial infection, including prevention, and describe the basics of standard precaution and the related types of transmission-based precautions. We will be talking about disease and infection, types of pathogens, establishment of infectious disease, stages of infection, chain of infection, routes for disease transmission, healthcare associated infections, types of hospital microbes, defense mechanisms of the body, medical and surgical asepsis, standard precautions, surgical procedure, aseptic and non-aseptic procedures, and lastly, mobile and surgical radiography. A disease is any deviation from or interruption of the normal structure or function of any part, organ, or system. It can also be a combination of all of these events in the body. Diseases are caused by microorganisms and is represented by the absence of health. To control the disease and stop its spread, the healthcare practitioner must have an understanding of what infectious agent is causing the diseases, how they are spread, and how they are controlled. Disease can be defined in terms of their pathogenesis, which is the degree in which the causative agent is able to cause disease. A disease that is less likely pathogenetic is less likely to cause an infection. Virulence is the causative agent's ability to grow and multiply. A highly virulent disease is very dangerous. Invasiveness is the agent's ability to penetrate tissue and cause an infection. If the disease is highly invasive, it can be more dangerous. Specificity is the agent's attraction to a particular host. Diseases can be attracted to a specific type of host. For example, someone with a compromised immune system will get infected, but a healthy individual will not get the infection. A comparison between HIV and influenza virus is a good example to better understand each characteristic. Both viruses are pathogens that can cause diseases. HIV can cause AIDS and influenza virus can cause the flu. AIDS is a potentially life-threatening condition while flu, in its simplest forms, often causes only mild illness. This means that HIV is much more virulent than the influenza virus. On the other hand, flu is a contagious respiratory illness that can be easily transmitted between individuals while AIDS is less transmissible. Most of the daily activities pose no risk of HIV transmission. This means that influenza virus is much more transmissible 
than HIV. Diseases can be inherited from a parent or grandparent. These are inherited diseases. An autoimmune disease has antibodies that function as antigens and damage one's own tissue. Rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and multiple sclerosis are examples of autoimmune diseases. Colonization is the presence of microorganisms on skin or the body surface of an individual with no symptoms. Someone can be colonized and inadvertently spread an infection to others. This infographic shows that almost three quarters of people infected with coronavirus have no symptoms on the day they were tested. Because a radiologic technologist comes in contact with multiple patients in the course of a day, hand washing is absolutely mandatory and must be performed before and after each patient is handled. This practice provides the simplest measure of environmental control of microbes. To stop the spread of infection, at least one link of the chain of infection must be broken. Hand washing is the most effective way to break the chain of infection and to stop the spread of disease. So how do we hand wash? First, wet your hands with water, apply enough soap to cover all of your hand surface, rub your hands palm to palm, rub your right palm over your left dorsum with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub your hands palm to palm with your fingers interlaced. Rub the backs of your fingers to the opposing palms with your fingers interlocked. Clasp your left thumb in your right palm and rub it rotationally against it. Repeat the same move with your left thumb against your left palm. Rub your right hand against your left palm rotationally backwards and forwards with your right hand fingers clasped. Repeat the same move with your left hand fingers clasped. Rinse your hands with water. Dry your hands thoroughly with a single-use towel and use that towel to turn off the faucet. The entire hand washing procedure should last between 40 and 60 seconds, and the duration of the hand wash itself should be between 15 and 20 seconds. Alcohol-based hand rubs can be used to reduce bacterial counts on hands. They provide several advantages compared with hand washing with soap and water because they require less time and act faster. In addition, alcohol-based hand rubs can be applied anywhere and do not require a sink or water. So how to hand rub? Apply a palm full of the product in a cupped hand covering all your hand surfaces. Rub your hands palm to palm. Rub your right palm over your left dorsum with your fingers interlaced. Repeat the same movement with your left palm over your right dorsum. Rub your hands palm to palm with your fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to the opposing palms with your fingers interlocked. Clasp your left thumb in your right palm 
and rub it rotationally. Repeat the same move with your right thumb clasped in your left palm. Rub your right hand against your left palm rotationally backwards and forwards with your right hand fingers clasped. Repeat the same move with your left and against your right palm with your left hand fingers clasped. Once dry, your hands are safe. The entire hand rubbing procedure should last for 20 to 30 seconds. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.